Meet Captain Cook, written by Ray Murdy, illustrated by Chris Nixon, first published in 2013. Captain James Cook was an English explorer in the British Royal Navy. In 1768, Captain Cook and his crew on the HMB Endeavour set sail from England in search of New Orleans and scientific knowledge. This is the story of how Captain Cook discovered the east coast of New Holland, Australia, on that voyage. Before Captain James Cook became a famous explorer, he was a baby born in a two-room cottage, a schoolboy, a farm boy, a worker in a seaside store, a sailor's apprentice studying at night, a husband, a father, and a mariner in Britain's Royal Navy. In the Navy, James Cook studied astronomy, science, and maths all while dreaming of one day commanding his own ship on epic voyages. He lived in a time of great exploration and scientific discovery. Nations raced to unlock the secrets of the world and its oceans. So when James was asked to lead an expedition for England, he accepted with pride. He was to captain a ship bound for King George's Island. From there, he was to chart the transit of the planet Venus across the sun. Captain Cook was also handed a sealed letter from the King. He was given firm instructions to open it only when this mission was complete. Captain Cook set about preparing for the expedition. For weeks he studied and planned and calculated. Of all the boats in England, a coal ship was chosen for the voyage. Though small, the ship was sturdy and strong. She was refitted and christened the HMB Endeavour. In August 1768, the Endeavour embarked on her maiden voyage with great pomp and fanfare. Among those on board were a variety of animals, 55 sailors, a one-handed cook, an astronomer, four artists and a botanist by the name of Joseph Banks. This motley crew readied themselves for the dangers of the open seas and the strange lands that were rumoured to lie ahead. The endeavour made her way down the coast of Africa in fine weather. The crew caught sharks and marvelled at flying fish. Joseph Banks spotted penguins and collected giant kelp. But the tropics soon gave way to the violent weather of the South Atlantic. Captain Cook and his crew prepared for the challenge of rounding Cape Horn. After three failed attempts, the endeavour overcame icy winds and bitter gales to forge through the dreaded passage and emerge into the South Pacific. After eight long months at sea, the crew dropped anchor off the coast of King George's Island. The locals paddled out to welcome them. They traded fresh food in exchange for beads and metal tools. Captain Cook and his men built a fort and an observatory where on a clear day they gathered to watch Venus pass across the sun. At last it was time to open the King's secret letter. It revealed a new and most important task, to venture south in search of new land. The Dutch had already discovered New Zealand and parts of the neighbouring continent of New Holland but both were still unmapped. And there were whispers that the Pacific Ocean was also home to a great southern land, Terra Australis. Captain Cook was to find it and claim it for the king.
Captain Cook sailed the endeavour southwards without a map. He steered by the sun and the stars over seas as wide as the sky. When no new land was found, the endeavour turned west, passing whales and seals and albatross. Supplies on board ran low, and without land in sight, the crew grew tired and homesick. When at last Captain Cook spotted seaweed and driftwood with barnacles, he was sure New Zealand was near. At New Zealand's Poverty Bay, Captain Cook and his crew faced fierce Maori warriors. Once an understanding was reached, the crew bartered for fish, lobster and even stingray. With fresh supplies on board, Captain Cook set about exploring New Zealand's inlets and bays. He surveyed its islands and completed his circumnavigation of the country in just six months. Captain Cook then turned his sights towards New Holland. Again, the Endeavour and her crew headed out to sea. They voyaged northwest until early one morning, the sloping hills of southeastern New Holland came into view. It was a sight no Europeans had seen before. But foul winds kept the Endeavour at sea. For days, Captain Cook and his crew sailed up the coast. They spotted smoke in the sky and saw men and women of dark skin living on the land. When the gales eased and the sea calmed, the Endeavour weighed anchor in a sheltered bay and her weary crew made dry land. The locals seemed to want them gone, but the Englishmen persisted. The crew barreled fresh water and caught more fish than all hands could eat. Joseph Banks ventured inland. He observed strange animals, collected flora and examined the soils and waterways. With his flagging crew, Captain Cook set sail, pushing the Endeavour onwards to map the east coast of New Holland. The further north the Endeavour went, the more dangerous her voyage became. Day and night, Captain Cook and his crew battled the narrow gap between land and reef, until one fateful night she crashed upon a coral bank. Captain Cook commanded his men to heave, but the ship wouldn't budge and water came rushing in. At high tide, Captain Cook again rallied his crew. Exhausted, the men heaved and heaved, then heaved again. At last, the endeavour came free, but she was still leaking and in need of urgent repair. Three days later, Captain Cook found a harbour to beach his leaky ship and began repairs. The crew caught turtles and picked wild greens. They saw strange coloured wolves, fat alligators, and a strange looking beast with a long tail and a hop like a rabbit. An uneasy truce was struck with the locals. Fish were exchanged and new language was learned, including the word for the strange looking beast. After several weeks, the endeavour was ready to set sail with the first fair wind. Captain Cook surveyed the land and its waters. From the very tip of the continent, he plotted a course to navigate the endeavour clear of the danger and to open sea. On behalf of England and King George III, Captain Cook claimed the east coast and called it New South Wales. It was now time to return home. Was New Holland the great Terra Australis? Or did the Pacific Ocean hold more undiscovered continents? Captain Cook did not know, but he vowed to one day return and find out.